What's going on, everyone? So we're inching closer and closer to training camp. We're less than two weeks away, and I want to start going through all the players and kind of give my thoughts and opinions on what I want to see, what I expect, and what I think the roles will be. And of course, I want to hear your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below. Again, this is just my interpretation. Yesterday, I talked about Christian Wood, and today, I want to talk about Jared Vanderbilt. So Jared Vanderbilt is a bit of a question mark for me because this is a guy that I think could maybe play 25 to 30 minutes just because he's so good you can't keep him off the court or he's a guy that just plays in spot minutes and maybe gets like 10 minutes a game on assignment right and by that I mean like okay you're just going to spend five minutes in the first quarter or whatever the first half and just put all of your attention and energy and focus into stopping Anthony Edwards or Kyrie or, you know, Katie or whomever, right? And then towards the end of the game, same thing. And it's because of the concern about the offensive side. So we actually have several guys now that can play very good defense, not Jared Vanderbilt level elite. Like Jared Vanderbilt is arguably, if not the best perimeter defender in the entire league. The guy is just absolute clams. But we do have several guys now that are very good defensively and also provide offense. The problem with Jared Vanderbilt is he is our currently, based off of what we saw last year, our worst offensive player on this roster. And he has been working like an absolute maniac all offseason on his three-point shot. Right, especially that corner three, specifically that corner three. And it's looked good in the videos and just images and stuff. Uh, I've shared a lot of it here on this channel and we've talked a lot about it, but obviously you see it all the time. Guys will make a hundred straight threes and then go 0 and 10 in an actual game setting and environment because the, the circumstances just completely change. Right, you don't have the time to get your feet planted to do this, do that. Right, like there's pressure, guys coming at you. Like it's just a completely different environment. You got fans, you got noise, you got so many factors uh, when you're actually playing the game as opposed to just you know you're standing in the corner shooting a thousand threes. But I love to see Jared Vanderbilt working on those things because those that's something that he's aware of that needs to work on, something that he needs to fix. And look, this guy, I mean, he's 24 years old. He has so much upside, so much promise, so much potential. You know, he's a guy that, you know, whether he's grown a couple inches or not, is still 6'8", six, 6'9", six, and can guard basically one through four, right? And that's massive. And in some cases, you could probably put him in spots on a five, right? I wouldn't want him guarding, you know, Rudy Gobert or something like that even, or, you know, Valanchunez or any guy. But if he did get switched on him... You can trust that he's going to use his instincts, use his length, use his size, his athleticism to at least try to disrupt and be a deterrent, right? That's very valuable. But outside of that, he's basically clamps one through four. And that is so much versatility because you have a guy that can guard the best player night in and night out. And we don't need him to be Steph Curry, right? We don't need him to be Clay. We don't need, we just need him to be respectable on the offensive side, you know, shoot league average or close to league average. League average is 35%. Can he shoot 34%? Something like that. Because if he can, then now it's it's going to be tough to keep him off the court just because of how good he is defensively. But if he continues to really struggle knocking down the three ball, then yes, maybe in the regular season, maybe you'll see him still get some significant minutes. But as we saw in this last playoffs, he's very likely going to have his minutes dwindle down more and more and more and more. Because, again, you if you're the Lakers, last year you didn't have anybody to replace Jared Vanderbilt. This year you have several guys, right? So now it's like, okay, yes, Jared Vanderbilt is just locked down elite defense. And... You know, we want to keep him on uh, uh, Luca or something like that. But it's like he's such a liability on the offensive end when we have a guy like a Torian Prince who can defend and guard one through four and also provide 39% from three-point range. 
Yes, he's not locked down elite like Jared Vanderbilt, but would you rather have an excellent team defense and a guy that is very good defensively, right, but can provide at least some level of competent offense, or would you rather have a guy that is absolutely elite defensively but provides no offense? Now, obviously, it depends on the lineups that are out there and the and the sets and stuff, but I... I my point is, is that depending on how much Jared Vanderbilt improves, I think dictates how much he plays, right? If I'm not, I don't think Jared Vanderbilt, and this is again, just me personally, I don't think Jared Vanderbilt's ever going to be an elite offensive player, right? But we don't need that from him. We need him to be that Trevor Ariza, Ron Artest type guy where he's just, he's guarding the best guy on the other team. He's making all the hustle plays. He's doing all the dirty work. He's doing everything, right? Now, obviously, Ron Artest and even Trevor Ariza to a degree could score the basketball. But with the Lakers, they were more of like that, the, the guy that was defending the other side and could give you, you know, 10 to 15 on any given night, right? Like Jared Vanderbilt... Can he just get, can he get to the point where he's just like a 10 point a game guy? Right? Like last season he was 8 points, 7 and a half rebounds and 2 and a half assists, shot 54.8% from the field. Right? Like can he just get that up to 10 points because he's shooting more efficient, more effective? Can he just get us to 2 to 3 threes a game? Something like that. Right? Like that would be nice if that could happen. Right again, not necessarily saying it has to be all this year, but the game plan for teams was leave Jared Vanderbilt wide open. Who cares? If he beats us, he beats us. And now we can double team Anthony Davis and we can actually play five on four rather than five on five. And that becomes a problem. That becomes an issue. And look, I'm rooting for Jared Vanderbilt. I I believe he is our future, our now and future small forward. I believe that the Lakers should start him and even close him. I think at worst, I think you play him the first five minutes and you play him the last five minutes. And, you know, if it's that tight where the offense is that stagnant and it's just like you got to get Jared Vanderbilt out of there, then you get him out of there. But I think if it's, you know, things are flowing, things are, you know, looking good, you know, it's a basket game either way or whatever. Put Jared Ver- J- Jared Vanderbilt in there and allow him to do what he does best, right? That's kind of my thought process with that. But I, I do expect with him putting in the work, right? Because I, I love seeing that from players. I love seeing players really, truly grind, really, truly put in the effort, really, truly put in the work. And that's what we've seen him done. Uh, and if he can translate that, so like, for example, not last year, but the previous year, 2021, 2022, right? He shot 14.3% from three point range. He doubled more than doubled that. And, and total last year shot 32.2%, but for us, he shot 30% and for Utah, he shot 33.3%. If he can just not double it, because obviously he'd be at like 60, almost 70% from three. I don't think that that's very likely. Obviously, that'd be nice if he could do that, but it's unsustainable. But if he could just get, uh, you know, again, 34, basically at least what he shot for Utah. He shot for Utah 33.3%. Can he just get to that for us? Because at least now... You have to at least respect it if he gets in the corner, right? Because now it's like, all right, like, you know, he could he could knock if he knocks down two or three of these, like now it's a completely different game and we could be in trouble. Like that's what I want to see. Can he can he translate that? Now, obviously, if he can, if he ever gets to like a 36, 37 percent percentage or better, watch out. <laughs> Good luck. Because at that point, he's probably the best three and D guy in the league. Like prototypical three and D guy, because he's already arguably the best perimeter defender in the league. And then you add in a thirty-eight percent three-point shot. I mean, good luck, right? This dude would be an absolute monster. But I also like what we've seen this offseason as far as like him 
looking at least again we haven't seen him in NBA action but we did see him in some scrimmages and stuff against pretty much NBA guys um look more comfortable handling the basketball right like we saw him go coast to coast a few times or like you know get a steal and run out and uh, on a fast break or whatever Right, but that's not the that's not the same thing as like being able to navigate through pressure, right? Like I would love if he could be like a Lamar light, right? Where like Lamar, not saying that he'll ever be as good as Lamar or anything like that, but I'm talking about like a sizable guy that can just basically grab the board and just go coast to coast, or you know, comfortably bring the ball up court and make a play for somebody else, rather than getting the rebound and kind of awkwardly getting it up the court, or waiting for an Austin Reeves or a D'Lo or a LeBron to come get the basketball. I would love if he catches a long rebound, just go, dude. Just take off. Go. Make them have to catch up to you. Right? And then him being able to make a play and make a decision, I'd like to see that. And his in his handling of the basketball, right? Like, working on his hands. I mean, it was... It, that was probably one of the most frustrating things about Jared Vanderbilt last year was how many times did was he spot up in the corner, the defender just completely forgets about him, Jared Vanderbilt makes an excellent, just beautiful backdoor cut, and the ball, boom, perfect precision, and he either fumbles it, or he doesn't properly gather it, and he either loses it out of bounds, or he gets you know blocked by the rim, or misses the layup entirely. That happened a lot last year. A lot for us, right? And I I want to see him be able to catch that basketball and finish strong and finish through that because he's probably going to have a lot of those. He's When he's on the court, he's probably going to have a lot of attempts right at the basket. It'd be nice to be able to put him on the offensive side, maybe in spots at the dunker spot. And you can just kind of run, you know, draw the and collapse the defense and just lob it up and let him go get it. Right, but it's like they would try to do that at times, and he just would kind of be a little fumble, you know, with with the basketball. So I want to see that improve as well. But look, Jared Vanderbilt's going to be a big fixture for the Lakers this year. He's going to be a very important piece for the Lakers this year. You know, I don't want to take anything away from him, but the difference between this year and last year is the Lakers aren't like the Lakers have alternatives. Right, like you could even go a Cam Reddish if you needed to, right? Like it's not like, well, if we take out Jared Vanderbilt, now what? We don't have any other perimeter guys, right? Other than Rui and LeBron, it's like now what? Like, are we going small? Like, what are we gonna do here? Where now it's like, okay, Jared Vanderbilt is killing us offensively. Put in a Torian Prince, put in a Cam Reddish, right? Put in, you know, uh, Christian Wood at the four, and maybe move LeBron to the three, right? Like, whatever. You have all kinds of alternatives to where if Jared Vanderbilt is a liability on the offensive end, then you're he, I can see his minutes kind of windled down. But I, I'm rooting for him. I, I love this guy. I was so pumped when we were able to get that extension. I was pumped when we traded for him, right? I mean, if you've been subscribed to this channel for a long time, then you're very familiar with when I was talking about the reports of the Utah deal before the deal happened. I'm talking about last offseason. And I was saying the only way I'd ever do it is if Jared Vanderbilt's included. Right. And here and here he is. All of a sudden we got him. And I am. I'm rooting for him. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion. So I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? Um, you know, do uh do you want to see Jared Vanderbilt um get heavy minutes and be a big piece this year? Or do you think like, no, he's probably gonna be spot guy? Um again, I don't see him falling out of the rotation or anything, because I've seen people throw out the the idea of him falling out of the rotation. I don't see that, but I could see him kind of getting very few minutes at the uh, on the basketball court. But again, anyway, love to hear your thoughts and opinions. However you feel about it, let me know down in the comments. Like the video, subscribe. You guys are awesome. See you in the next one.